Hi, this is Brad Linder with Mobile Computing, and yesterday I showed uh, some first impressions of Google Android 2.2 for OEO on the uh, Nexus One. Today I wanted to go through um, a little bit more and to show you some of the uh, changes that I've noticed now that I've been using it a little bit longer. Um, first thing you'll notice is that uh, every home screen has the browser and the home buttons, uh, which uh, makes it a lot easier, takes up uh, less space so that they're always available no matter which home screen you're on. Uh, second thing is when you press and hold for the recent programs, you can now show up to eight of your most recently run programs. doesn't matter if they're open or closed at the moment. Uh, it used to be that you'd only get six, and that there was sort of a border around them. Now it just sort of dims the background and uh, highlights these guys. Another thing is if you tap and hold the uh, uh, little square box here that launches programs, you get previews of all five of your open tabs. So you can quickly jump to tab number five, or tab number four. Honestly, it's kind of faster most of the time just to scroll, because scrolling is pretty fast, but, you know, if that's something that you really want to use. Now, another thing I wanted to show here is the uh, widget that lets you control the brightness now has an auto setting, so you can have it be uh, at dimmest, sort of middle range, brightest, or auto dimming. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, settings. Probably the most exciting one here is if you go into wireless networks, you'll find that you've got tethering and um, portable Wi-Fi hotspot. And what that'll do is let you either plug in a computer with a USB cable and share your 3G connection with that computer, or as the portable Wi-Fi hotspot, it'll actually change the Wi-Fi. So instead of uh, receiving Wi-Fi signals, it transmits Wi-Fi signals. So you can share your 3G access with any computers that are linked. Uh, going back to the settings menu here, something that uh, was sort of a pet peeve of mine early on is that while you do have that power widget that makes it easy to uh, uh, change your display settings, uh, you used to have to scroll down and down and down before you got to display in here if you wanted to fine tune. Now it's one of the top settings. Still too many clicks, I would say, in order to do this, but, you know, it's a little bit easier than it used to be. Um, what else we got? If you go into Applications and Manage Applications, you'll see that you can now install applications to the SD card, theoretically. Uh, this is something we're still waiting on developers to uh, implement. So right now, uh, there's no really easy way to uh, install most apps to the SD card. But uh, it will be that you'll be able to, upon installation, choose to put them on the SD card instead of the main memory, helping to uh, free up some space. Or after they're installed, some applications will be able to be copied over to the SD card. Um, running services, this is sort of new and improved, you get uh, uh, information about how much space is available and you can click on any service and stop it. So it's turned into a little bit more of a task manager. Let's go back to the home screen. And you've got a couple of uh, new widgets here the uh, search widget has been improved so that now instead of just doing uh, all or web search you can actually do an app search widget and for example it'll just show you Fennec or uh, so it's only showing applications that meet those queries you can also create a widget that's searches everything, and now when I type in, for example, ROB, it'll show Robo Defense, but then it'll also show contacts that have ROB in them. The uh, Android market has been improved to a certain degree here. It's still a little bit slow to load at times. But once it does load, uh, right now I don't have anything to update, so there's no update all button at the bottom. But if uh, I, if there was something out of date, you click update all, and they all get updated. Now you can also go in and allow automatic updating on a per-program basis. Um, so that one will automatically get updated as updates are made available. 
you'll also notice that Adobe Flash Player has been installed and you can check allow automatic updates. I've chosen actually not to do that because I just sort of want to see when the updates are available um, so it should notify me and then I can install them. Now the Gmail application has been improved as well so that the um, there's forward and backward buttons making it easy to get from um, message to message. The SMS application now shows uh, icons so you can see who it is who's been uh, uh, sending you texts. The camera, whoop, that's not the camera application. The camera application has been improved so you no longer have to pull out a screen here in order to get your settings. You can um, just pull them up from the side of the application and uh, I think there's actually more settings in here than there used to be. One thing that's pretty nifty is if you go to the video and turn on the flash, your LED will actually turn into a flashlight. It essentially stays on. So it probably won't be too long before we start to see third-party flashlight applications. The car home has been changed. Uh, you get a message here telling you to exercise caution when driving. And you've got navigate, phone, voice search, contacts, music, exit car mode. And a second screen for maps, night, day, automatic settings. And a couple of blank spots here, which I'm not sure if there's an easy way to adjust those, but exit car mode. Uh, a lot of people have noted that the uh, gallery loads faster and uh, images load faster in the gallery. Most of the pictures in my gallery are actually um, stored online, so... But you can see, you know, loading pretty quickly here. Uh, here's something that's pretty cool. When you go to the... Um, keyboard, you can actually pull up and get a numeric uh, keypad, sort of. Now, it's it works in a strange way, so that you actually, once you lift your hand, it disappears. So you can only really enter one number at a time. So if you need to enter a bunch of numbers, it's still going to be faster to switch the uh, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C button. But, you know, if you just need to enter a quick punctuation mark or something, um, you get those and you get your numbers. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting here is that traditionally you could uh, just rotate in one direction, so you had portrait and you had landscape. Now you've got portrait, landscape, and landscape. The phone will actually rotate to either side. It won't go upside down, but I can't quite imagine why you'd want to hold it upside down anyway. Going back to settings for a second, in um, accessibility, there's a new option so that you can have the power button end phone calls, so that's new. And in voice input and output, there's voice recognizer settings. You can choose language, and in addition to default English, Chinese Mandarin, um, Japanese, there's English generic, English Indian, English New Zealand, Australia, UK, and Canada. And uh, so what that means is if you have a accent from different parts of the world, uh, Google's not going to think that you're speaking different words. It's going to do a much better job at recognizing uh, what it is that you're saying when you're trying to do voice input. Um, so that's uh, you know, most of the differences here. Um, the, you know, the applications still haven't all been updated. So I've noticed, for example, that uh, some calendar widgets don't work as well as they used to. If you try to install the smooth calendar widget, for example, it's supposed to show a list of upcoming appointments. It doesn't show anything at all right now. Um, yesterday, 
I had the same problem with calendar pad. Today, it's showing appointments. So, you know, it's just a question of having the developers update their applications to take advantage of the latest calendar APIs. Uh, also knows problems with radio streaming. I have a couple of different online radio applications. I really like uh, a online radio or Android online radio, but it uh, can't stream MP3 uh, radio stations anymore. So I tried a couple of different ones. Ant Player seems to work. Stream Furious seems to work. Hopefully in the next couple of days, a online radio will work as well. Uh, another thing that's changed here is YouTube application or YouTube videos. Um, a lot of them should have high quality option buttons here. So you can watch uh, standard resolution or high quality videos. And um, a lot of people have noticed, I'm not going to demonstrate this here, but in the voice recognition, in addition to understanding uh, different regional accents, um, it now understands swear words. Um, I uh, showed you the text message application. It has a light background instead of a dark background now. Uh, same is true for Google Talk. The background is now light. Um, so that's about it. Um, oh, another application that uh, I've noticed does not work at the moment is Apps Installer automatically crashes. This is one that normally scans your SD card for applications that you can install. There's you know, still plenty of ways to do that, though. You can, uh, If you have APK files that you want to install, you just uh, Use a file explorer like ES File Explorer and scroll down until you find them. And then just go ahead and install. Um, well, that one had issues, but uh, the um, members of the XDA Developers Forum have also noticed that uh, Helix Launcher, which is a uh, home page, home screen replacer, uh, causes a crash loop. So if you have Helix Launcher, you definitely want to uninstall it before you update to uh, Froyo, because your phone's basically going to become unbootable at that point. So um, there you go. That's a uh, slightly more detailed look at some of the changes that are in uh, Android 2.2 Froyo. I think I went through about 20, 25 different changes. Uh, mentioned a couple of problems. You can uh, stay tuned to mobiputing.com and this YouTube channel for uh, more information about Froyo and uh, other smartphone devices and uh, operating systems and applications.